What's up guys, Jay here, and welcome to the next installment of our class building series. If you're new to the series, here we go more in depth with each of the class's weapons and equipment to show you in much greater detail the kinds of upgrades and potential that each class has in terms of being set up for those high difficulty missions. So far we've gone over the engineer and driller classes, but today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite bullet spewing dwarf, the gunner. So without further delay, let's take a deep dive into the intricacies and finer details regarding the kit of the gunner and also how you can be prepared to take on those high hazard missions on the road to legendary. By the way, if you want to see more gaming videos, subscribe to the channel, that way it's easier to find my content. It ain't a gun if it don't weigh at least 100 pounds. So you want to become a better gunner player in Deep Rock Galactic. Well, first, if you want to get better, you have to have a good understanding of the base functions of how the class works. Lucky for you, I've already covered the basics of playing the gunner in the Gunner Beginner's Guide. Make sure to watch that video if you have not yet, because a lot of the things that we start talking about in that video will come back in today's video. Now that we have that out of the way, today we are going to be expanding on those ideas and try to get the most out of what the gunner can offer. Like I said in the original video, the gunner has a pretty simple simple but satisfying job, to shoot and exterminate everything that moves. He doesn't have quite as much intricacies and in-depth techniques as the driller for example, but that doesn't mean that he is any less useful or integral to the team's success. What makes the gunner stand out from the rest of the dwarves on the roster is his unmatched ability to deal heavy damage and his pure firepower that can make short work out of even the most dangerous enemies. He can make hunting the dreadnoughts a simple walk in the park. He can shred the caretaker's defenses and make collecting its data rack a simple task. And he laughs in the face of enemy swarms because it just gives him a reason to empty half of his ammo, which any gunner main will tell you is not a bad thing. Finally, his ability to protect the team cannot be undersold. His shield, as well as his powerful ordnance, can help to give your team a safe haven to fall back to in order to take the pressure off of them. Simply put, the gunner is like having a big bodyguard on the team, keeping the bugs in check and his teammates alive. So what if I like really big guns? The gunner's role is a simple one, but also an important one. Remember that you are the team's muscle. As such, it is your responsibility to ensure your teammates' safety and your enemies' unsafety. So to help give you an idea of at least where to start, let's go over how you can set up your gunner so that you can be as useful and effective to your team as possible. First, let's talk about what kinds of perks you might want to use. For the gunner, you want to try to have a good amount of survivability and utility in order to make sure that your team can reliably turn to you for help whenever needed. For passive perks, firstly, I would recommend Resupplier, as it helps you get your weapons and equipment loaded faster. Secondly, I would recommend Born Ready, since the gunner's weapons can have pretty punishing reloads, unless you're running the minigun, in which case you could swap this out. The last choice is more of a flex spot depending on the type of mission you're running, but options like Veteran Depositor, Strong Arm, or Unstoppable could all be good choices depending on the mission. For active perks, again, there are many ways you can kit yourself out. Shield Link is a personal favorite of mine as it helps the gunner lean into the role of being a strong protector for his teammates, giving them a strong shield boost whenever needed. Secondly, I like taking Dash as well since the gunner has probably the least effective mobility out of all the classes and you may want something to help you escape quickly. Some other good options would be Field Medic or Iron Will and feel free to experiment to find the loadout that works best for you. I'll kill anything with more legs than two! Now that you have the right perk set up, it's time to go over what makes the gunner, well, the gunner, and that's his guns. From the minigun to the coil gun, we're going to go through all of it, taking a deep dive into the full list of potential upgrades that these weapons have and what exactly they do. Remember that I won't be going too deep into overclocks because I haven't gotten all of them yet, but I am working on it, but I will mention certain overclocks that are very effective that I do have or have learned about through my research. The Lead Storm Minigun is the starting primary weapon the gunner has and it's extremely simple and easy to grasp. Hold the fire button down and release a hail of bullets that will turn any poor bug caught in its line of fire to turn into Swiss cheese. Wait, does cheese exist in this world? Anyway, the minigun is essentially a gigantic bullet hose that can get even better with the use of its upgrades. In the first tier, you have a choice of either more effective cooling rate and decay, increased rate of fire, or improved accuracy spread. Here I would personally go for the improved accuracy to help keep this gun on target as good as possible. In tier 2, you have a choice of either either an increased ammo reserves or increased damage. Here the choice isn't too extreme, but I like taking the increased damage for more overall killing power, since that's what you want to do. In tier 3, you have either improved armor breaking capabilities, a better stun chance and stun duration, or increased penetration for possible collateral kills. Here the choice is down to personal preference in terms of what you want this gun to do, but for me, I like better armor breaking to help with those tougher enemies. In the fourth tier, you can either make it so that the gun spins up faster, letting you kill things faster, increase the amount of time the gun stays spinning, allowing for quicker rapid shooting, or give you increased damage when you are fully stabilized. 
This is another instance where it depends on what you are trying to do with this weapon, but I am a simple gunner, so I say more damage equals good. Finally, in tier 5, you have either aggressive heating, which reduces the overheat duration and applies a fear effect to enemies around you if you overheat, cold as the grave, which reduces the gun's heat for each kill, or hot bullets, which causes your shots to apply heat buildup once the gun's heat level reaches the red. This is another choice that depends on what you are using this gun for. For me, since I like to use this gun for effective horde control, I take cold as the grave to keep me shooting longer, but if you want to use it for more single target damage, then you could go with either of the other two options. In terms of strong overclocks, the one that works well for me has been Exhaust Vectoring, which gives you more damage at the cost of a higher spread. If you take the Accuracy upgrade in Tier 1, the Accuracy penalty is not too bad and allows you to dish out even more damage. The Thunderhead is a huge double-barreled heavy machine gun that fires explosive rounds that's more for the sophisticated user. It's both incredibly fun to use and extremely effective at its job. It kind of reminds me of a flak cannon in terms of how it shoots, and its upgrades allow it to be even more deadly. In the first tier, you have the options of either increased damage, increased magazine size, or more overall ammo reserves. Here the choice isn't too extreme, but I would say either increased damage or more overall ammo is a good choice. In tier 2, you can have either improved base spread for more accuracy, a faster maximum rate of fire, or a faster rate of fire increased speed. Here I like to take the faster growth speed for rate of fire so you can start killing things faster, but really any choice here is good. In tier 3, the choice is between either even faster maximum rate of fire, increased area damage, or increased direct damage. Here you can't really go wrong with any option, but I like the increased direct damage for more single target killing capabilities. In the fourth tier, your choice is between either armor breaking capabilities or a greater splash damage radius. Here you could do either choice, but personally I like the better armor breaking for taking out those tougher enemies. Finally, in tier 5, you can choose either increased damage at max rate of fire, increased damage reduction at max rate of fire, or the addition of a fear effect applied to enemies around the bullet impact zone. Here it comes down to what you are using the weapon for. If you go the route of fully upgrading the gun's area of effect, going for the fear effect can turn this weapon into a strong crowd control tool. For me, I use this thing for more direct damage, so I go for the increased damage at max rate of fire. For overclock, something like combat mobility can actually be useful, allowing you to be more mobile while dealing a heavy amount of damage. You could also just play it safe and use something like splintering shells for some more area damage. The Hurricane is a great option for those wanting to add a little more boom to their arsenal, firing more slowly than the previous two options but possessing much more initial stopping power. The rockets fired are guided and can be aimed with great accuracy. The rocket pod is a great option that can be upgraded to great effects. In the first tier, you can have either increased maximum ammo reserves, increased direct damage, or an increased area of effect radius. Here it's not too extreme of a choice, but for me, I like to take the more area of effect for better splash damage. In tier 2, you can choose between either increased projectile velocity and turning speed, or improved armor breaking power. Here I like to take the faster projectile speed to help make this gun fire just a little bit faster. In tier 3, you can either take an increased magazine size or a faster rate of fire. Here you can do either or, but I like a bigger magazine for more missile launching power. In tier 4, you can go either increased weak spot damage or increased area damage. Here I would go for more area damage, since this weapon is already made with area damage in mind, so further increasing it is most profitable. Finally, in tier 5, you have effects that either convert a portion of the damage dealt into heat damage, allowing you to set enemies on fire, increase the weapon's stun chance and duration, or increase the projectile's area damage the longer it remains remains in the air. This choice can depend a lot on what you are planning to use this weapon for. For me personally, I like to take the stun chance increase since its splash damage can help to stun multiple enemies at once. For overclocks, the one that I have that is probably my favorite and the most fun to use is the salvo module. It lets you charge up the rocket pod to load up to 9 rockets to launch them at once in a kind of shotgun blast that deals more damage the more rockets you have loaded in the salvo. This one's a lot of fun, but I'm not sure how much viability it has and more difficult content, so just keep that in mind if you're going to use it. For secondaries, our first option is the Bulldog Heavy Revolver. As I said in the original video, it lets you fulfill your fantasies of being a dwarf cowboy, and it's a great sidearm to accompany the rest of the gunner's arsenal, doing a high amount of damage and having a very high stun chance. The Bulldog can be upgraded in a variety of ways to ensure that you can get the most out of it. In the first tier, you have either improved reload time or improved accuracy spread. Here I take the better accuracy since, personally, I don't think this gun's reload speed is too bad in my opinion. In tier 2, you have either increased damage, improved shot spread and recoil, 
recoil or increased ammo reserves. Here I would go with either increased damage or improved recoil to get the most effective use out of it. Tier 3 gives you the choice between either increased penetration, increased damage as well as area damage, or increased weak point damage. This choice depends a lot on what you plan on using this weapon for. Personally, I take explosive rounds so I can do area damage, but if you want to use this gun for hitting those tough enemy weak points, then you can do that as well. In tier 4, you can have either increased ammo reserves or increased overall damage. Here I like to take extra ammo because this gun already has really good damage, but doesn't have quite as good ammo reserves, so this gives you just that little bit to make you feel more comfortable. Finally, in the 5th tier, you can choose between either having no aiming penalty while moving, or the addition of a poison damage to your shots. Here I like to take the no aim penalty while moving since it allows me to be more mobile while in combat. The gunner probably has the least effective mobility in the game, so you need to take every chance you can to increase how effectively you can stay moving. Finally, for overclocks, the two that I like to bring the most are six shooter and elephant rounds. Six shooter gives you more ammo and magazine size at the cost of slightly worse spread and reload speed. Even with these drawbacks, the weapon still functions very well and has more shots that you can use. Elephant rounds, on the other hand, do the opposite, significantly reducing the amount of ammo you have, but making your shots do an insane amount of damage, which makes taking out Dreadnought armor or Caretaker eyes a breeze. Burst Pistol, or BERT as it's called sometimes, is an interesting alternative to the Bulldog you can bring. Instead of strong single bullets, it fires a burst of smaller, faster rounds that can be good for picking off stragglers after a swarm, especially when upgraded. In the first tier, you can have either increased base damage, improved spread accuracy, or improved penetration. Here, I like to take the improved spread for more accuracy since the damage is already pretty good. In tier 2, you can have either improved recoil, improved reload time, or a faster rate of fire. Here, the choice isn't too extreme, but I like to take increased rate of fire so I can spew more bullets. In the third tier, you can choose between either increased magazine size or increased damage. Here, I take the increased damage since the magazine size is already pretty good in my opinion. In tier 4, you can have either improved armor breaking power, increased overall ammo reserves, or increased weak point damage. Here, this choice is up to you, but I like to take the increased weak point damage since that's what I primarily use this thing to hit. Finally, the last tier, you have either increased number of shots fired in each burst, or the addition of a stun effect if an enemy is hit with all shots in a burst. Here, I would go with the increased burst size for a higher damage output. For overclocks, it's hard for me to say since there are a lot that I don't have for it, but for me, micro flechettes do very well. It essentially gives you a ton more ammo and magazine size at the cost of much less damage. There are probably others that are effective, I just don't have a lot of them, and if there are, let me know in the comments which ones are very good. The coil gun is definitely the most interesting secondary in the gunner's arsenal. A handheld railgun essentially, the coil gun sacrifices a high rate of fire for an insane amount of penetration, being able to get extremely high collateral kills and taking chunks out of enemy weak points and armor. Its upgrades can be very useful in increasing its killing power. In the first tier, you can either choose increased damage, more overall ammo reserves, or a faster charge up speed. Here I take the increased ammo reserves, but any choice here is good. In tier 2, you can choose either reduced reload time, increased damage for the longer you hold down the charge, or giving you the ability to control how much energy you can put into a charge shot in order to conserve ammo. This is the one that I would go for as it gives you a lot of control in terms of ammo and charge power, allowing you to get the most out of your shots even if not at max power. In tier 3, you can either add a chance to stun enemies near the shot's trajectory or apply a fear to enemies near the shot's trajectory. This one's up to you, but I like the stun chance because it just means enemies who are stunned are easier to kill. In the fourth tier, you have the choice of either taking reduced damage while charging or dealing a shockwave blast as well as the normal shot when firing that can damage enemies directly in front of you. This is the one that I would go for as it can help keep the pressure off of you if enemies are close. The last tier gives you some pretty interesting choices. Necrothermal Catalyst makes it so that killing an enemy will cause an explosion that damages nearby enemies. Electric Trail adds an energy trail that follows each shot that can damage and slow any enemy that walks into it. Finally, the Dilated Injector system simply increases the radius of the shots fired. Personally, I would go for the Electric Trail since it can give this weapon more damage even after it's been fired. For overclocks, I can't say too much since I don't have a lot, but something simple like Ultra Magnetic Coils is good since this weapon is already very unique. If you guys have any others that you think are very good, let me know down in the comments. Just show me what I shoot! So now that we've set up the weaponry for our gunner, it's time to go over the rest of his kit and set up everything else we need to get the most out of him. In terms of which throwable ordnance you want to bring, the sticky grenade is very good if you want one big thing dead quickly. 
These are good to bring on things like elimination missions for the dreadnoughts or anything with the lead enemies to take them out quickly. The incendiary grenades are great for blanketing a wide area to ignite many enemies, or allies if you're so inclined. Any mission type where you encounter a large amount of swarms would be a good place for these. The cluster grenades do a similar effect, but to me at least, don't do as good of an effect as the incendiary grenades. They send out several smaller mini grenades to pepper an area with explosive damage. They can fill a similar role as the incendiary, so you can go back and forth between them if you want. Finally, the lead bursters are grenades that shoot bullets, which makes complete sense. The interesting thing about these is that since they shoot bullets, they can actually hit enemy weak points with the projectiles. These can be good on missions like on-site refining, where you need to get bugs off of a specific spot quickly. The zipline launcher is the gunner's trademark traversal tool and allows him to make quick and direct paths from one place to another. One advantage the zipline gun has compared to the other tools is that it can reach a good degree of verticality that the other tools cannot, except for the scout's grappling hook, but that doesn't count because it's selfish. In any event, you can use the ziplines to make easy to use paths from one point to another that the whole team can utilize. In certain missions like refining and point extraction missions, you can use them to set up a kind of spider web network to get around the map quickly. It also has its own array of upgrades to improve it. Tier 1 lets you choose either more ammo, more range, or a higher max angle. Here I take the increased angle. In tier 2 you can only choose more range, so there you go. And finally tier 3 gives you either faster speed while on the zip lines or fall damage reductions while on the zip lines. I take the fall damage in the event that you're accidentally knocked off. Finally, the shield generator is the gunner's support tool, and it's probably the most important and effective tool he has. As I said in the original video, when the gunner uses the shield, it gives his allies a place where they can go to to stay safe and catch their breath. Not only does it allow your teammates' personal shields to start regenerating, but it also applies a fear effect to the bugs, meaning that they don't want to go inside the shield. Combine this with the fact that you can shoot from the inside, but the bugs can't shoot into it, and you have a very useful tool that provides sanctuary to your team. There are countless ways that the shield can be used to aid the team from covering Doretta on an escort mission to covering Haxi in a sabotage mission, or just covering your teammates while you revive them. If you ever feel the need for some pressure release, just throw it down and enjoy the safety, at least temporarily. For upgrading the shield, honestly in my opinion just prioritize all the upgrades that increase its duration because like I said in the original video, it does not last long at all without them. After that, just go for the upgrades that increase its area for maximum coverage. Time to turn some aliens into thin green paste! So now that you know the real ins and outs of the gunner and his kit, it's time to put it all together. Now you can figure out just how you want to exterminate the enemy swarms. You could use the minigun and the burst pistol and just be a bullet spewing machine, or you could use the rocket pod and coil gun for extreme explosive damage. Whether you're cutting through the enemy swarms or deleting enemy bosses, remember that as the gunner, the main goal of keeping the bugs under control falls to you so that your allies can focus on completing the objective. And don't forget that the most important thing to keep in mind when playing the gunner is whether or not you are having fun. Well that was a heavily armored video, but hopefully now you have a much better understanding of the kinds of setup the gunner has and how to equip yourself when you're ready to do whatever the high difficulty missions throw at you. So what do you guys think? Did I miss anything? I hope this answered a lot of the questions people had and I would love to hear your feedback. If I did miss anything, or if you want me to go in even deeper detail and do specific build guides, let me know down below. I'm always open to new ideas. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next Friday for another video.